So in this lesson, we're going to be moving from trigonometric ratios to trigonometric functions. So what that means is instead of looking at sine and cosine as ratios, we're going to be looking at sine and cosine as functions. In order to do that, we need to be able to graph them. So we're going to graph them now. To do this, we have to look at our x value is going to be given in degrees. So we're going to work on 30 degree intervals and then determine our y value by finding the sine of x. So our first value, x is 0. So the sine of 0 is going to be 0. Okay. Again, giving us an approximate value of 0. 30 degrees. To find 30 degrees, we need to use our special triangles. So our 30, 60, 90 triangle. Again, remember our side lengths, 1, 2, and root 3. So the sine of 30 degrees is going to be 1 over 2 as such, okay, giving us an approximate decimal value of 0 0.5. 60 degrees is going to be root 3 over 2. Again, giving us an approximate decimal value of 0 0.8660. Okay. 90 degrees is going to be 1, again, giving us a value of 1. <clears throat> when we get into our obtuse angles, we have to go back to our unit circle and looking at angles on the Cartesian plane. So, for example, I have my angle here. Um, so, my initial arm will lie on the positive x-axis. My terminal arm is going to be somewhere in quadrant 2 over here. Okay. This angle is 120 degrees. Now remember, we're not actually looking for that angle. We're going to be using that related acute angle, which is the angle we form between the terminal arm and the x-axis. Okay. In order to find that value, I look at 180 degrees as my total angle. So I do 180 minus 120 to get me a related acute angle of 60 degrees. Okay. I can now use my special triangle to give me the value of sine x. The other important thing to keep in mind is we have to think of the value is sine x positive or negative. So that we use our cast rules to remember quadrant 4 cosine is positive, quadrant 1, one all ratios are positive, quadrant 2 sine is positive, and quadrant 3 tangent is positive. Okay, so because we're in quadrant 2 sine is positive, so I know that my ratio is going to be positive root 3 over 2. Okay, and again 0 0.8660. For 150 degrees, that would give me a related acute angle of 1 over 2, or 30 degrees, sorry, which gives me a value of 1 over 2. Again, we're in quadrant 2, so sine is positive. 180 degrees, again, goes back to 0, because our related acute angle is 0 degrees. When we get to 210, our angle now lies in quadrant 3. Okay, so again, quick example of this. Okay, so my initial arm, and then my terminal arm. So my entire angle is 210 degrees. Again, the related acute angle in this case is going to be 30 degrees. Okay, because I know 180 is to the negative x-axis, so an additional 30 degrees to go uh, to the 210, that terminal arm. Okay, we look back to our cast rule, so C-A-S-T, so I know that in quadrant 3, sine is going to be negative. So 30 degrees gives me 1 over 2, but it's going to be negative 1 over 2. Okay, giving me negative 0 0.5. Okay, for 240, that would be a related acute angle of 3 over 60 degrees, which again gives me a value of root 3 over 2. And again, this is going to be negative because it lies in quadrant 3. So negative 0 0.8660. Okay, 270 degrees, that's going to give me a value of negative 1. 300 is related to acute angle 60 degrees. Again, it's in quadrant 4 this time, so it's still going to be negative. So it's going to be root 3 over 2.
330 degrees is a related acute angle of 30 degrees, so giving me 1 over 2, again quadrant 4, so it's negative. 360 degrees is back to 0, and that's one full cycle of our function. If we continue through uh, our table, you'll notice that these are the values we have, so they'll be repeated on the 360 degree interval. Okay, so 60 plus 360 is 420, and you can see they have the same values. Okay, so now that we've found all of our exact values and our approximate values, we can go ahead and graph the sine function. Okay, so we start at 0, 0. 30 degrees, we're at 0 0.5. 60 degrees, we're at about 0 0.866. There. And 90 degrees, we're at 1. 120 degrees, again, we're at 0 0.866. Um, 150 degrees, we're back at 0 0.5. And 180, we're at 0. Okay, 210 degrees, we're at negative 0 0.5. And then 240, we're at negative 0 0.866. And then 270, we're at negative 1. 300, we're at negative 866 again. 330, we're at negative 0 0.5. And then back to 360. Okay, so there is one full cycle of our sine graph. Okay, and again, it would continue for as many cycles as you wanted to graph it. So we're going to use this to give us the information at the bottom. Uh, so our amplitude, again remember amplitude is the difference between the maximum and the minimum divided by 2. So our amplitude in this case is going to be 1 unit. Okay. My minimum value is negative 1. My maximum value is positive 1. My period is 360 degrees. Okay. So key points or quarter period Again, these occur at 90 degree intervals starting at 0. So 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. Okay. The equation of the axis, in this case is the x-axis, so is going to be y equals 0. My domain is just going to be x as an element of the set of real numbers. Okay, so this cyclical pattern will be repeated infinitely in both the positive and the negative directions. Okay. My range is going to be y as an element of the set of real numbers, such that, and then again we use our maximum and our minimum points. So y has to be greater than or equal to negative 1, and less than or equal to positive 1. Alright, so next what we're going to do is we're going to be graphing the cosine ratio. So we're going to do this very much the same way we did the sine ratio. Uh, we're going to use our x values in degrees, again, at 30 degree intervals. And we're going to find the cos of x, so the cos of that degree value, uh, to give us our y-coordinate of our function. Okay, so again, recalling from previous lessons, uh, the cosine of 0 degrees is equal to 1, again, giving us a value of 1. Uh, so the cosine of 30 degrees, again, we're going to use those special triangles, so our 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay, so the cosine of 30 degrees is going to be root 3 over 2. Okay, again, if we evaluate this in a calculator, we get 0 0.8660. Okay, we then do the cosine of 60 degrees is equal to 1 over 2, or 0 0.5, and then the cosine of 90 degrees, which is 0. Okay, again, we go back to our angles on the Cartesian plane in our unit circle uh, to find our angles greater than 90 degrees. So for our 120 degree angle, again the same way we did with sine, uh, we have our initial arm on the positive x-axis. Our terminal arm is going to be somewhere in quadrant 2, and our angle is 120 degrees. What we're looking for is that related acute angle uh, between our terminal arm and the x-axis, okay? Again, I know that the entire x-axis is a value of 180 degrees, so we find the difference to give us 60 degrees.
Okay, I can then use the cosine of 60 degrees to tell me uh, my value. So cosine of 60 degrees is 1 over 2. Okay, again, don't forget we use our cast rule in order to tell us whether that's going to be positive or negative. Okay, so again, quadrant 4 cosine is positive, quadrant 1 all ratios are positive, quadrant 2 sine is positive, and quadrant 3 tangent is positive. Okay, so given that we're in quadrant 2, that's going to be negative 1 over 2, or negative 0 0.5. Okay, we can continue to work through this uh, with our other angles, again looking for that related acute angle. So 150 is going to be an angle of 30 degrees, or root 3 over 2. Again, it's going to be negative in quadrant 2, so it's going to be negative 0 0.8660, uh, 180 is going to give me a cosine value of 1, because that's going to be related to acute angle of 0 degrees. Um, 210, again, just one last quick example. Um, 210, we know my angle is going to lie in the third quadrant. And I know that my related acute angle is going to be my angle in here which is 30 degrees. Okay, um, again, we're in quadrant three, so tangent is positive, so my cosine of this value is gonna be zero. So the cosine again of 30 degrees is negative root three over two, okay, or negative 0 0.8660. Okay, 240 is an angle of 60 degrees. Um, again, negative one over two, or negative 0 0.5. 270 is going to give me a value of 0. 300 is going to be in quadrant 4, uh, a related acute angle of 60 degrees. So it's going to be 1 over 2. And again, be positive because we're in quadrant 4. And then lastly, 330 degrees, again, is going to be root 3 over 2, as we have a related acute angle of 30 degrees. Okay, again, positive because we are in quadrant four. 360 degrees takes us back to zero, so our value is one. Okay, we could then repeat our values, again, because one cycle in the cosine function is gonna be 360 degrees. So when we finish our table, it'll look something like this. Again, uh, all of our values are here, so we can use this to graph the cosine function. Okay, so again, our degrees are on the x-axis, and our cosine of x is on the y-axis. Okay, so at zero degrees, our value is one. At 30 degrees, our value is approximately 0 0.866. At 60 degrees, our value was 0 0.5. At 90 degrees, we were zero. 120 degrees, we were negative 0 0.5. 150 degrees, we were negative 0.866. I'm just going to take this somewhere approximately here. Um, 180 degrees, we're negative 1. And again, we can plot the rest of these points. Again, we draw a nice smooth curve through our points as best as we can to illustrate one full cycle of the cosine function. Okay, uh, we can go ahead and then describe the different characteristics of the cosine function in the table below. So our amplitude is going to be one, the maximum value and the minimum value. Our minimum value is negative one, our maximum value is positive one, the period is 360 degrees. Our key points, again, are at 90 degree intervals, uh, so 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. Uh, the equation of the axis is y equals 0. Our domain, again, x is an element of the set of real numbers. As this is a periodic function, it'll continue on to infinity in both the positive and the negative x direction. Our range, 
y is an element of the set of real numbers such that, again, our minimum, negative 1, y has to be greater than or equal to that value, and then less than or equal to our maximum value of 1.